Jeff at Joker Machine. We just got this new Aprilla. Well, I just got it. Um, it's a pretty nice bike, man. Very impressed with it. But I want to put some parts on it, and I can't find any instruction on it, so I thought we'd just do a quick uh, video doing the exhaust system real quick. Uh, it doesn't really need the exhaust system for any more performance. Everything works really good on this bike. But uh, trying to put the exhaust system on, it's a bit of a hassle. Um, I didn't have any instructions and I didn't know how the bodywork came apart. So hopefully this will help anybody else. Maybe not, but we'll take a look at it and uh, go from there. Okay, what you see here, or what I think are the necessary tools to work on this bike for this application. We are gonna take the headers off of this and put them back on for you. I've already exchanged the headers. Uh, the headers themselves are all just about the same. The only real specialty tools that I found a little bit uncommon are the 25 and 27 Torx, which I guess are common. Uh, they have a lot of torque bolts on, on this application on this bike. So we'll just go forward with it. Okay, the easiest way to work on this bike, and trying to put an exhaust pipe on this bike, it's not, it's just a common exhaust. There's no big deal doing that. We'll get down to, when we get down there, we'll explain that in detail more. But getting to everything is kind of a pain. There's a lot of screws and a lot of stuff has to be removed. When you're working on this bike, for me anyway, removing the windshield opens everything up let you get your hands in there to get the things um, so we're going to remove the windshield first set this aside just a note when you remove the windshield it has these nut plates stuck in here and they're kind of free floating they are indexed in I found it was better to glue these in with super glue. So when I went to put back on the windshield, it made the job a lot easier. Just a thought. Okay, to get started on this, the windshield being gone certainly has a big help. Next step is to remove the seat. The step after that is to remove the gas cap and cover all this plastic has to come off and that is probably the biggest part of this job is just removing everything this is where the torques come in this panel is basically just a cover so it comes right off Probably the trickiest part of removing this is not dropping the uh, screws in the gas cap or in the gas tank. You do have to have the cap off to do this, so you basically have a hole right here. I'd be really careful with this. I'll probably drop one in there. Let's hope not. Okay, with this removed, you can kind of see a little bit more of the bike. This is where it gets kind of a little bit difficult. Um, I'm going to put the gas cap back on. Just for safety purposes. So as you can see, most of the plastic and stuff is removed on this side already just to save some time. But I am going to go take it off on the other side and kind of show you where everything's located. Uh, when you first look at it, it's pretty hard to figure out what's holding what together. But once you work on it, it becomes, that's eh, pretty simple. A little bit of labor, but nothing too hard. Okay, the tricky part in removing this stuff is just finding the stuff. Uh, there's a lot of these little plastic rivets. I think there's four of them on each side. 
Um, they're a little tricky because they, they blend in with the bike, but one of them is located right here. And they're pretty easy to get out. You'll need a small screwdriver to make this work. Then you remove the rivet. It's also got a Torx right here, which I'm gonna remove. And there's some rivets behind this piece right here, and we'll get to them in just a moment. One of the Torx is right here. Pretty easy to get to. Shouldn't be dropping them. There's another one underneath here. It's at the very bottom. It's just facing straight down. You can see it easy enough if you get under there. Remove that. Then there's another one up here on the radiator. Right here. That needs to be removed. I guess I popped it out already. But uh, once you get those out of here, this thing basically snaps on. You want to be pretty general, gentle doing this. It's just got a couple of push. Here you can see where this one goes in here. Another one here. And that goes up in here. Um, it's all pretty simple. But there's a view of that. With this exposed, and the other side comes off exactly the same. Um, there's nothing magic about it. The bolts are in the same location. On this, this is one of the harder parts to take off, and it's only because you won't be able to find where the plugs are. It's got one of the plastic rivets right in here, another plastic rivet right there. I'm gonna take this off real quick and kind of show it to you. The other thing in this is, it has a connector in the front and a connector in the back. The rivets go through this hole and this hole. Uh, they're about the, the hardest thing you have to remove. You can kind of see where this one is down here on this tab. This tab also mates with this piece here. So you wanna make sure when you're putting this back together that you line up these two pieces here. Uh, when we assemble, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. And there's a the hole for the top rivet. It's kind of hidden. You can kind of see it. See them installed on the other side and we'll show those to you. Okay, the next thing to come off is you wanna get the radiator guard off. It gives you a little bit extra room to work on everything. It's strictly held on with a clip, so it's just a matter of manipulating it. And you can see where the two bolt holes are for this. Okay, the next thing is to come off are the heat shields and the skid plate. Simple enough, four millimeter Allen wrench here. Kind of just slips off once you get it loose. It's held in by this and this. Even being an aftermarket pipe, this pipe has exactly the same locators and tabs as the OEM pipe. So basically it's the same thing. Easy enough to take off. Now we're gonna go down and remove the uh, actual skid plate. It's easy enough. You got four screws on the bottom here, two up here, two back here. You do not need to remove the nuts that are down there. They're holding on uh, bumpers that sit up against the motor to take the shock out of this thing hitting something. So, on my bike, these are four millimeter. I changed from the OEM bolts, but I think stock, they were M8s. And really all we're trying to do here is having more room to work and make everything easy to get to. There may be easier ways of doing this for all I know. Anyway, there's the skid plate off. Okay, this right here is the, the sensor for the exhaust pipes. This one goes on the um, left-hand side. Uh, this needs to be removed. This is for the horn. This is easy enough to unplug. Just kind of set it out of the way. Don't forget about it. There is a couple of zip ties on here. I cut one of them off. The next is to take the sensor plug itself and remove it, which is relatively easy. Kind of push on the top here and it releases it. You can kind of see that it's so hard to show these things and get the proper angle on them but that is the release button right there okay after you do that we're going to do this on both sides of the bike too it makes this job easier i'm going to release this 
and again this is where this gets a little bit tricky you want to be slow and pay attention to what you're doing here otherwise you'll be screwed so as this is all coming apart you kind of see um, it's going to free this up and we're going to do this sensor on this left hand side without actually removing the whole thing it makes it a little bit easier and faster uh, what I found out doing this is uh, you can actually turn this when you go to release the sensor uh, without removing it. If you rem probably could remove it, but it's, it doesn't have a whole lot of room in here to play with. Um, this part, after you release this plate, you can kind of just start looking at it. Everything gives you a little bit of room to work with. Probably one of the hardest things to do is kind of disconnect this thing, and I think I can do it this way. I'm just going to try to push this out by collapsing these ears. Easier said than done, but let's work on it. Voila! Toughest job to do right there. Okay, so with this removed, you can kind of see this wire is right here. This is where it actually, the wire that actually goes down to the pipe itself. And I suppose you could feed it through here, but if you just kind of let it sit and when you move further into this and remove the sensor from the header, um, you'll see what I'm talking about. This can actually stay right where it's at and then you don't need to fish it out. Just make a mental note of where everything is. Take a photograph if necessary. Um, there's really nothing that can go wrong here, but that's easy enough to say in another story to do it. Okay, we're on the right side of the bike now, basically the same as what we did on the left side. Um, it is slightly different because we are going to remove the wire on this side to make it a little bit easier. And we have more room to work with. Um, bear with for just a moment. And we'll get this done. The side's actually a little bit easier. Um, that screw will actually stay in there by itself. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this one and one more time. These things are a bitch. Okay, so we got that release. Then we're gonna have to do the same thing and remove this little tab here. Hopefully I can do it a little bit more sano than I did the last one, but who knows, probably not. Okay, that one came right out, so that, that's a victory for me. And then you can see, if you just kind of manipulate this around, you can get this to come out, I believe, over the top here. Just kind of move a couple of things. Voila. So it's in front now. So we'll start releasing some more of these uh, parts right here and move forward with this. This is really the hard part of the job. Everything else kind of... Uh, works out pretty well I just hate these switches well hates a big word <laughs> okay so what I'm gonna do is just loosen these right now providing I know what size wrench I'm using it's also important to put high temperature any C's on here so this one's loose now I could probably remove it all the way at this point in time so let's Let's see if I can. I know they don't have a whole lot of threads on them. This is actually one of the easier things to do. And that's what you're looking at. I don't imagine you should run your fingers over that or anything like that, I'm not sure. But you can see it's got high temp anti-seize on there which made that extremely easy to take out. And I believe the manufacturer recommends that. So there's this one out, this one over here we're not going to be taken out just yet. I'm going to go loosen it and we'll be there in a second. We're on the left side of the bike. I already loosened up the sensor in the pipe right now. And I'm going to just move this and make sure this turns with it. As long as that's happening, nothing's going wrong with the wires. And this makes it a little bit easier. I think you'd have to take the radiator off to do this right. But I don't know because I haven't done it right. 
but this was easy enough to do and again all the stuff's new and it's all got anti-seas on it so it it actually rotates very nicely okay so this sensor now is removed and that's without me having to you know pull wires through the the frame here might not be too bad but i i think this is the easiest way to do it um when, once it's loose it's pretty loose and i might be able to pull it out here but i'm not going to try because i don't want to try to put it back in so now we're at the point where we need to remove these two springs and the two manifold uh, clamps so this will be pretty easy at this point um, this pipe that's on here is an arrow pipe and the main reason I put this pipe on here was I didn't like how hot the stock one ran this bike's extremely hot and we live up here in Lake Havasu which is uh, basically the hottest little city in the world uh, for the last week our temperature hasn't been below 115 degrees so you'll try to do anything to cool things down up here and I must say putting this pipe on here definitely made a difference um, I'm not saying it's perfect but uh, it's made a lot nicer and we'll compare the pipes when uh, I pop this off of here so we're gonna go on to the next phase and start loosening up the manifolds remove those two springs and this thing should be coming off in just a couple minutes Okay, the springs are easy enough to remove. Uh, this pipe came with a spring puller. I'm using uh, my trusty old FMF spring puller. But once those are released, I've still got the one bolt here. It's still holding everything up. Uh, I'm gonna release these in just a second. And then uh, we'll remove this and this whole system should come out. Okay, now we've got the springs off. We're gonna take our 10 millimeter deep socket, small ratchet. This fits right in there. Uh, it's gonna release everything just fine. You can see the nuts right here. I like to get these nice and loose, but, but leave the nuts on near the end. Come over and get the other one. Maybe in my lifetime. There's actually quite a bit of room up here uh, to do this, so it's not, it's not a bad job. Okay, so <clears throat> we have all the flange bolts out in the front. I'm gonna take this one off right now. Hopefully this just comes apart. That's what it did, it just came apart. So there's the system removed. Okay, so what we got here is uh, <clears throat> on the bottom is the OEM exhaust and the aero exhaust on the top. You can kind of see where the can goes. It's a lot tidier on the aero exhaust. And I believe that can flows a lot, a lot better. Um, the OE one got really hot really quick. This one doesn't seem to be as affected by it. Uh, one thing that is different on the aero pipes is the two uh, head pipes coming out of the cylinder are separate. They're not attached like this. Um, I'm gonna, when I put it together, I will take it all the way apart. Just wanted you to see the difference. Uh, one thing, it, the header pipe on the uh, arrow pipe is a lot uh, nicer design. The way it kind of comes into the can. Uh, and it weighs less. Putting the sensor back in the left, left pipe, making sure that I'm watching the plug turn as I put it in. I'm just going to take it up to where it's finger tight. And then uh, once everything's cinched up, I'll do the final tightening on this part. We're going to install the arrow headers back on the bike here. Make sure that you clear the uh, radiator without going into it. It's easier if you do it just this way. You definitely want to make sure your gaskets are lined up correctly when you're doing this. It's an easy thing to have one of them fall on the ground or get sideways in there when you're taking an exhaust system apart. And it just makes for a lot more work. So anyway, here's the pipe, the sensor. Stock pipes just like this. Just put that in. And again, make sure you have um, anti-seize on there, high temperature preferably. And I'm just going to take this snug that's a 17 wrench and then 
once this is all together i'll give these each a, a little bit more tightening so i'm going to mount this pipe up right now okay so we're putting on the uh right side header now again double check to make sure you got room to run this back through don't get it all kinked up in there kind of like what i'm doing double check your gasket your nuts started don't tighten anything at, at this point put everything together loose for a few minutes make sure you kind of put the nut on far enough to where it holds the gasket in place doesn't need to be super tight just hand tight at this point you can kind of move everything around and get it all lined up too this system actually lined up really nice the first time I put it on so you want to bring the pipes to about like that to start with that's where you're, you're going to slip the other pipe onto it at i'm going to tighten these up just a little bit more so they're more in their uh, place so i'm hand tightening these up just a little bit more you want to make sure you tighten these up even too that really helps also i drew a red line on my pipes before i took them off so i knew when i had them uh pretty much lined up correctly doing this the first time obviously you won't have that opportunity okay i tightened these up just tight enough to where they're relatively snug and that's just because i don't want them floating around when i go trying to put the collector on it what we're going to do now is hopefully put these headers with the collector and kind of want to use a little bit of finesse on this not that i have any but uh hopefully you do kind of get everything prepped and again the main thing is from beginning to end is do not tighten anything up on this until you, everything is basically lined up set up and you may have to doink around with this for a bit as I can see I am Put the middle support bolt in here just to hold this whole thing up and then we're going to try to finagle these pipes back in which they seem to be going especially now that, that bolt fell out but that's here and there, there and to be honest this probably isn't as hard as what it is right now uh, because the pipe actually has some galling on it from the first time it was put together so I'm having a little bit more trouble getting this to kind of line up to what I'd like. It's all going. A little bit of work, but not the end of the world type of work, so it's all right. I am going to loosen this one back one here slightly so I can get a little more play in the header. If that's what you call them. Okay, so... This is all, all starting to line up quite nicely. And I think we can go forward. I'm going to attach the springs to it in just a second here. Uh, that was a relatively easy job. I uh, need the spring for. So, the springs hold these, these pieces together. And um, you kind of got to reach back in here and make this happen. Uh, there is two springs. The First one's probably relatively easy. And this will also help align this thing as we're doing it. Some days it's easy, some days it's not. Okay, I'm gonna put the second one back on right now. 
have both springs on that actually pulled the pipes in good this bolt's still loose um, we're just going to forge forward on this a little bit here uh, hook back up the wires for the sensors and like i say that there's a spot where this one can come right through right there so this side was pretty easy the other side we won't have to do that because we left it intact uh, we'll plug these back in in just a second we're plugging all this back in uh, at this point in time this is where this sits this faces inwards I still have that screw in there from when I disassembled it and then we're gonna plug this back in hopefully I get this right the first time good you want to hear that clicking sound too by the way I want to start with the bottom screw on this thing because you can kind of flex this uh, switch out of the way I'm gonna take this up most of the way but not tight and that way I can still move it around and get the top screw in check it again I did a little bit more now I'll put the top one in Check this one, not too tight. Make sure everything's cleared and nothing's in the way of being pinched when you go to reassemble. And so I think that completes that side right now. Um, this all looks pretty good. We're gonna go over to the left side of the bike now and finish with that. So we're back on the left hand side you can see this thing's nice and free it didn't didn't go through anything it's not caught on anything so um, basically we're gonna put this back just the way it was and I got to remember how that was and make sure everything's free to move about check it look at it be it okay so this goes back together a lot easier than it came apart that's for sure okay I heard the click so that makes me feel good I'm gonna double check this look at everything make sure it's tidy This side's actually a little bit easier. I guess the main point is to make sure this is all plugged in. You don't have any wires pinched. Um, this one you want to tighten up. top screw because we have one more plug to put in here I believe it's the fan plug don't want to forget about that I thought I tucked it up in there but it must have fallen down let's hope I'm doing this the right way good that feels really good just inspect everything a little bit double check everything this here was actually zip tied up on here so I'm gonna do the same thing I like to use these thinner kind of cooler zip ties well, I'm gonna end up doinking around with this for three minutes I don't want to put everything back the way it was there's probably a reason for it not that I know what it is Again, just check everything, make sure everything's connected, that you didn't pull anything, everything's clean. Cool. Well, there's all the sensors hooked up and everything. And again, I'm gonna go back and put the final tightening on these with the wrench, since they only have to go a quarter turn, probably. For our big bonus feature in this header install, we're gonna actually put a Leo Vince uh, slip-on exhaust on it. And I believe it's got a quiet core in it. 
and kind of conclude this thing uh, pretty quickly here. Anyway, I just wanted you to see it by itself. Uh, the only difference between this and OEM is it comes with a little bit of extension. This is a little bit shorter than the stock pipe. It's also about six pounds lighter. It's got this unusual clamp on it too with this uh, spring attachment and you'll see where that comes into play in just a moment. And putting on this slip on, the only thing I had to do differently is I did remove this panel right here and uh, it has two more bolts but that kind of goes for the luggage rack and I'm not going to show the luggage rack, it's off of here already. Maybe another video, who knows. So this simply comes off after you've uh, taken the like I say, I had a luggage rack on here. And this has got one clip in the front here. This is also cool because it kind of exposes everything right here. This is the bracket. This is the Leo Vince bracket. To be honest, the stock one looks identical. I didn't see what the difference was in them. Uh, they're both actually really nice brackets, the stock one and that. One thing about this area now that it's exposed, we'll just go over it. Uh, this is an excellent time when you have this off for whatever reason or that's what you're going to take off to run your wiring up to your GPS device uh, I went with the direct wire deal and this was a little bit tricky uh, I'm using a Garmin and the Garmin has a pretty good sized little box on it which I'm looking for right here this box will not slide down from the top so I ran a the wires up from the bottom and it was really quite easy when you have this off you can just run the wire down the side here down here bring it up here here it reappears um, and straight up and it's easy enough to feed once you have all this stuff off it's pretty easy to get your hands in here uh, just letting you see where, where it goes uh, worked out just fine we're gonna put the slip on on comes with this unusual clamp it's kind of cool uh, has a spring hook on it so it needs to kind of go on first. This is the ex extender. This goes on here, or S-bend, whatever you want to call it. Basically, we're just going to hopefully slip this right on. Seems to be going on pretty easy, to be honest with you. We get the bolt. This is all pretty self-explanatory, but I did put a little bit of an aluminum spacer between this and the pipe, just because I could. Again, we haven't tightened anything and we're still not going to. As you can see, this was a, about a 10 second job. Kind of want to get this to where you can see that there's still some clearance on the swing arm get this all the way on right now this is looking pretty darn good to me and seems to line up where, where I put it last time and this is where this little clamp comes into play move it into place you do kind of want to get this in the best position you can because it will flex a little bit here and you might have to tweak it slightly and when I say tweak just after it's all together but right now it looks like it's lined up in the right place and I'm not going to go super tight on it because I'm going to go back and I'm going to check the manifold screws in the front of the car. I'm going to go back and just make sure all this stuff's tight now because everything is lined up and uh, basically finished as far as where it's going to rest at the moment. Okay, so that's all the exhaust bolts tightened there. We got the one in the middle for the uh, mid pipe and. Uh, yeah. And now we're tightening the mid pipe bolt. Come back now and completely tighten the back bolt. Again, checking to make sure I got clearance here. And it looks real good. The pipe didn't move. Okay, so that kind of buttons up the pipe as far as that. The next thing we're going to do is go get a ra clean rag with some lacquer thinner on it and wipe off this pipe because it does have uh, handprints on it 
and those will uh, definitely turn into stains if you get it too hot. You just take some lacquer thinner and go over the, the whole pipe and it'll definitely uh, get your fingerprints off of it. Mine were pretty slimy to be honest with you. It's a good idea with a pipe to wipe it down with something before you um, actually fire it up. Okay, I'd already taken these up, now that everything's on there. Now I'm just putting a little bit of tightening on these to make sure that they're well seated. That's about it on that. These are the heat shields for the uh, exhaust and for the header. This one is the arrow one. It's kind of a little bit shinier than what I'd like it to be. Cut. Then this Leo Vince one's totally nice, um, super high quality. And they also put a foil background on it. And when you get it, it comes with these little washer looking things. They're actually insulators uh, to keep the heat from uh, coming through this a little bit and wearing it out prematurely. So we're gonna install these real quick. This only takes a second. And of course the wrench I need is not the one I can pick up. I'm gonna use an M4 Allen wrench to do this. Hopefully this happens pretty quickly. We're just finishing up the heat shields. Everything went together pretty good. Um, you gotta make sure you keep the spacers on behind these things. It, uh, it does make a difference on, on how easy it is on the, uh, the carbon fiber. So this all looks pretty good at the moment. We'll move on to another section here. Remember on this, you got the uh, the pin that goes into this location here just line that up boom all this is good get your screws in there and get them started okay once that's on like i say there's a rack that goes on here you're not going to see it the radiator cover has to go on before any of the other body work you can kind of see where it goes there's a spot here spot here spot here and then one up in the center and it's got little plastic tabs on the back side of it. Um, got to put them in there. Let's see if I can do this in a halfway easy fashion. Last time it was not. When you get this up here, you want to make sure that the plastic tabs for the screws are, are lined up right here because uh, more body work is going to hold this in place once it all takes place or all tightens up. Uh, we'll move on a little bit here. This is... Uh, first cover to go back on um, this one's also the hardest one to deal with for me anyway I'm, I'm half blind and I'm old and I just hate shit like this so I want to show you these plastic rivets that's what they look like when they're ready to go back in basically you find these on everything nowadays um, well these are the first I've seen on a bike usually it's on UTVs um, one of them will be positioned here and one will be positioned here um, this here will go go in so this has to kind of go in going forward um, I don't know what my technique's going to be I'm not a mechanic um, I'm just doing this so we'll give this a go putting it back on it shouldn't be too bad what I've done is I got the front of it in here like I say it slides in going forward so I'm going to try to get this first uh, piece in there. Okay, it, it went in easy enough. Then there's a second clip at the back here. I press that in. You'll see this line up right here. Now here's where it gets kind of miserable. Uh, getting these um, uh, rivets to go in. So, okay, so the, the one rivet... Oh, again, you got to make sure the body works lined up in here too. Uh, there's a little tab in here I showed it to you when we were taking this apart the first rivet will go in at the top here there's really no room to show this very well but it's right here it's right below this edge the second rivet goes into the orange plastic and it's in the side up here and I kind of think I showed you where it went and that snapped and you'll hear them snap when they go in once they're in there they're in there to stay you don't put any screws in here just yet. Um, we're going to put the side panel on real quick. This is a left hand uh, radiator shroud, I guess is what you call it. 
And again, at the very back of this, from where I'm, where I'm at, I guess, this will also take a rivet going right through here. And again, kind of hard to see. Uh, it does take a bolt right here. It has one, two locations for the, um, the snaps to go into. So let's see if we can line this up and make this happen. Okay, it's also important that this bolt hole is on the outside of the radiator uh, uh, guard. Uh, this is the part that stays on the outside and this will have another bolt going through it as will the bottom of this will have a bolt going through it and we'll show you those as we're assembling this thing and get it lined out. Hopefully I can do this right the first time. Okay, all I'm doing is checking to make sure that well, that one went in easy enough. And that one went in. So, I'm going to check to make sure all my holes are lined up. This one's lined up. This is exactly where I wanted this to be. I can put the screw in right there. And uh, that all looks pretty good. So I'm going to put the plastic rivet in the uh, radiator shroud cover first before the bolts. And you heard it snap. So this thing is basically on right now except for the other screws. So let me get the screws together. I'm going to put the easiest one in first. This one. And just get it started. I'm not going to tighten anything. This is the one that goes through the radiator shroud and into the top clip. It's not supposed to be on the ground like that, but that's what happens. So we put the panel on here. Everything seems to be lining up. There's one screw right down here. Kind of doing this blind, which is not the best way to do it. Okay, after the panel snapped on, the hardware goes in. I actually had a little bit of trouble getting this to line up. It's kind of a pain, but all these screws have shoulders on them too, which kind of make sure you. Get pass them through the center. And trying to get these rivets in and out. It's about zero five. Okay, so you got one to tighten up here. You got one to tighten up down here. You got one on the radiator right here. I'm going to leave these all loose until the very end and get the other side on there just to make sure I have room to move around. Though. Okay, so we just set the uh, the left uh, or the right side uh, radiator shroud up. Again, the bolts are the same pattern as on the other side. Got one here. That's probably the easiest one. You got. The one's up on the radiator. Got the one sitting downwards, facing downwards. Just want to make sure you get all these tight. Not too tight, they're not big bolts. And then the one punch pin here at the very back. So that secures all that. Um, kind of the hard part to be honest with you. Kind of done with this awful close anyway. Okay, so we're gonna, I don't know what you wanna call this, tank cover, air cleaner cover, reinstall it. This is uh, the moment of truth for me. Um, Again, without the cap on there, you want to be pretty careful about putting these in. Um, wouldn't hold too many things in one hand. You should probably pay attention to what I'm saying. Okay, so we got those started. Just 
just going to make sure these are started a little bit in there. If there's a way into that gas tank by having these bolts here, I'll find it. Although I guess I could drop the whole socket in there. Okay, we're just tightening down the tank cover. Or air filter cover. Hey, these are plastic screws. Or, I mean, they're going into plastic. The screws themselves aren't plastic. I wouldn't get over excited about tightening them. That seems like something that could strip out pretty easy. Put back on the gas cap. Take another gander and everything looks pretty good. Okay, well as you can see, most of the mechanical part of this is done. Matter of fact, I think it's all done. Um, we're going to put back on the final heat shield that covers that can right there, which I assume is a catalytic converter, um, not a power bomb. Uh, one thing I did do to this is drill this out quite a bit, trying to get the hot air um, moving about a little bit better i don't know if it makes any difference or not but for the effort i put in it doesn't really matter we're going to fire this bike up in just a minute okay well it looks like this project's complete so we're going to fire up the engine so you can hear the exhaust i've ridden it with this exhaust on here it definitely made it a bit peppier um, in the future i would I'd like to see a, like a power commander comes out or something for this. Um, probably put that on there and eliminate that cat, but that's here and over there. Um, it does sound really awesome though. Big problem here is I have no idea where the keys are for it. Be right back. <laughs> okay, found the keys. Guess I'm ahead of the game. Good. 